Hi, in this video, we're going to look at a walkthrough of the example uh, for the recency frequency monetary or RFM analysis from chapter seven. So in order to do this, we're going to go into R and look at how to create the RFM score. Then we're gonna take the RFM score uh, over into Tableau to do some visualizations. So let's go ahead and start in R. So the first thing we want to do in R is open up the code from chapter seven. And that should be a file called RFM analysis. So let's go ahead and make this a little bigger so we can see it. Now, our first step is always to check to see if there are any packages we need to load. In this case, we are going to load a package called Dipler, D-P-L-Y-R. So we'll go ahead and install this package. And I'll use the cloud. Now, once we install the package, we can load the library and set our random number generating seed. Okay, so now we've installed the package we need uh, for this analysis. Let's go ahead and read in our file. So the file we want is a file called retail underscore RFM. Now, like usual, if, if we want to see some of the data in the file to make sure it's the file we want, we can click over here into the console window and we'll type head open parentheses RFM, and we can see the first six rows of data. So here what we see is uh, each customer has their own row of data. And for each customer, we've aggregated the data such that we can see the amount of revenue that customer has spent with our firm, uh, the number of orders, this would be the frequency, and the time or the number of days since their last order. Then we can also see whether or not this person purchased uh, during the um, time when we ran this campaign. And lastly, we actually do have their zip code information as well if we wanted to map uh, where these people were coming from. So we have the data we need to compute the RFM score. The next step is to determine how many of uh, groups do we want to sort each of these RF and M variables into. In this case, we're going to pick five because remember, if uh, we want to sort them, we are going to essentially multiply uh, five times five times five or 125 groups. So when you're picking number of groups, make sure you pick a reasonable number. If you do 10, you know, it will be 10 to the power of three groups and so on. So five seems like a reasonable number uh, of groups for each of these categories. So we'll set the groups equal to five. Now this next section will actually create the two RFM scores. This one will create the independent sort RFM score, and this section here will create the sequential sort RFM score. And then we'll go ahead and add those RFM scores uh, back to the uh, original data and export that data to uh, Tableau. So we'll go ahead and run the independent and sequential sort sections. And now the last step, like we said, is we're gonna export this file. We're gonna call it RFM underscore result. Got CSV. And we'll put the file in that folder. So now we have the file we need to go over into Tableau and actually visualize some of these RFM score results. So we can make our way over to Tableau and we'll start by opening that RFM result file. So we can go to file open. We'll choose the RFM result we just created. And now what we can do, we'll see the data here. Again, we see the, the, the revenue frequency and recency data. Uh, we will also see the purchase and zip code. And then we have all of the RFM scores and the index numbers for those different groups. So let's go ahead into sheet one and start looking at the data. First, we're going to look uh, at the independent sorting. 
and then we'll look at the sequential sorting. So in sheet one, we'll start by looking at the distribution of RFM scores um, as, as it relates to, uh, in this case, as I said, we'll start with uh, independent sorting. So first thing we need to do is to tell Tableau that these index scores that we created are actually dimensions rather than measures. So all of these cases where we have these uh, scores, we're gonna change them to dimensions. So we can hold down control and click on all of the different scores. And then we can right click on one of them and choose convert to dimension. So now we should have all of these different indexed RFM scores listed as uh, dimensions. So now if we want to um, look at the, the score, the distribution of scores by, let's say, different RFM uh, buckets. So we'll start with doing that with the independent sort. First thing we're going to do is we're going to drag uh, purchase, because this will tell us how many people purchased in each of the cells, over to rows. Now, this is the sum of the number of purchasers in all of the groups. What we're going to want is we're going to actually want the uh, percentage or the average number of purchasers in a group. So we're going to right click on, on the down arrow here on the pill for purchase and change it from sum to average. So you can see the overall average or the overall percentage of purchasers in our data is about 17.8%. So next, we're going to sort them by their categories. To do this, all we need to do is drag over the RFM score. In this case, we're going to start with the independent sort score over to columns. And you'll see here that now it's going to create a column for each of the different uh, independent sort index scores. You can see some of them are trickling on to the next uh, farther down on the right. If we want to sort of see this whole thing in one, one uh, figure, we can change from a standard view to entire view. So now we can see all of the different um, index scores and the percentage of purchasers in each of those buckets. Right? And remember, uh, back when we calculated our, our break-even rate, we said any index uh, cell that has above uh, a 15.63% uh, purchase rate is a cell that we might want to target. So we can sort of see where 15% here is. Uh, for instance, this cell of 231 would be a cell that we would want to target. All right. So now lastly, we can change uh, the title of this sheet. So this one uh, we're going to call RFM score with independent sort. We can also do the same uh, picture for the sequential sort. So for that, we're just going to enter into a new worksheet. Uh, and our new worksheet will do the same thing. We'll start by moving purchase over to the rows. Again, we'll change it from sum to average. And here we're going to take the RFM score using sequential sort, put that in the columns. And now we will change the view again to entire view. So now we can see all of the columns. And lastly, we can go ahead and change the name here to RFM score with sequential sort. So now we have two figures, one for independent sort, one for sequential sort, that will help us with understanding which of the different uh, index buckets we might want to actually target. So the next step is we might want to actually dive in and look at some analysis around each of those buckets. So if we want to look at that, uh, we can start by opening a new sheet. So here what we're going to do is we're going to see in each cell the percentage of purchasers that actually show up in each cell and then color code them so that we can quickly identify cells that are attractive to us to target versus cells that are not. So in order to do this, we're going to create a table um, with three different dimensions. Uh, on one axis, we're going to look at 
in this case, um, we're going to look at uh, the, I believe, the monetary score. And then on the other axes, we'll look at the, the recency and frequency score. So uh, we'll start with the independent sort. Uh, so we're going to start by dragging monetary of the independent sort to the columns. We'll drag the recency and we'll drag the frequency of the independent sort. And now you can see it's building us out a table where each of these buckets is going to include whatever measure we want to put there. So let's start by putting in uh, a measure of purchase. Right, so we're going to drag purchase. Uh, first, we'll drag it to color. Right, this will give us different color codings based on the percentage of purchasers that are showing up uh, in each of the cells. The second time, we'll drag purchase again to label. And now we can see that we're actually getting, in this case, uh, counts of the number of purchases that are happening uh, in each of the buckets. Now, first thing we might want to look at is the percentage of purchasers. So in this case, we're going to highlight these two uh, by holding control and clicking, uh, left clicking. We'll hit the down arrow and choose average. So here we have the percentages of purchasers in each of the cells. Now, this isn't terribly uh, clear to read for two reasons. One, it's small. Uh, and two, uh, the colors uh, make it harder to see. So the first thing we could do is uh, we could change the color by going over here to the top right, choosing Edit Colors. Let's pick, uh, in this case, Orange Blue Diverging. Now, we only have two um, groups that we're interested in, those above the break-even, or equal to or above, and those below the break-even. So in this case, we're going to use a stepped color, where we're going to only step it for two groups. And then we want to make sure we don't do it just at the, the middle, like it will assume we're going to go to advanced and say, we want you to set the center to actually be our break-even rate. So in this case, 0.1563. When we apply that, you can actually see now we have a group of, of red coated cells and a group of blue coated cells where the red coated cells represent groups we don't want to target and blue represents those that we do. Um, the next thing we could do is we could actually make this a little bigger. So we'll go to format, font. We can make it whatever size we want. We want to make it nice and big. We'll choose 16. And we can see here now it's much easier to read these numbers. Okay. Uh, so what we have here, if we want to title this figure, right, this is going to represent, in this case, a percentage of purchasers in each cell using independent sort. So this, this represents that table. Now, the nice thing is once we have it sorted in a table, we can choose different ways to aggregate the data. So if instead we wanted to actually know how many purchasers there were in each of the groups, we could get, we could go to this uh, text of the average purchase. We could change it from average. So in this case, we're gonna change it to sum. Sum will tell us how many purchasers. So we would change this title if we did that to count of purchasers in each cell using independent sort, right? So we can see here the number of people in each cell that they have purchasers. And the third thing we could do is if we wanted to know, for instance, how many people were in each cell. In that case, we could change the sum instead to count. And this will tell us the total number of people. So this isn't the count of purchasers. This is the count of customers that are in each cell using independent sort. Okay. And we can go back and we can count them. We can look at the, the percentages and uh, count purchasers as well as counting customers to sort of see how big these cells are and how attractive they are to us. Okay. We can also do the same analysis for um, 
sequential sort. So if we click on sheet four, uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll start by moving the monetary of sequential sort to columns. We'll move the recency and the frequency to rows, right? We get the same looking table here. So again, we'll drag purchase to color. Then we'll drag purchase to label. And we'll start by highlighting these two uh, and changing them to average. Right, again, we have the same issue that it's harder to read. So I'm going to change the colors. So we'll edit colors. We'll change to orange blue diverging. We're going to change stepped colors to two. And we're going to make the center point again our break even rate. And lastly, we're going to, for this to see the table better, we're going to choose to change the font to 16. All right, so now we have a table here where we observe the percentages of purchasers in each of the cells. Two things to observe. One, all of the cells are filled because when we do sequential sort, we're forcing the number of people in each cell, number of customers in each cell to be approximately equal. So we see more of a distribution of people to all the cells, right? Whereas if we go back to sheet three, we can see a lot of cells had nobody uh, when we used independent sort because independent sort is going to clump people together based on certain types of patterns of behavior. Whereas sequential sort is first gonna sort on one dimension and then sort within each of those dimensions again uh, and do that for, the, for F and for M. So in that case, you're going to e end up with equal number of people on average in each cell. So we can go ahead and title this. We know that this is the percentage of purchasers in each cell using sequential sort. Okay. Now the next step like we did last time is we could look at the number of purchasers in each cell. So we would change the measure from average to sum for the text. We can see how many purchasers show up in each cell. So we would just change this to count of purchasers in each cell. And the last thing we could do is we could change from how many purchasers to how many customers. In that case, we will change this from sum to count. And that will change this to count of customers in each cell. Now, like I mentioned before, what you see here is you see that the number of customers in each cell is equal because of the fact that we did sequential sort and we first sorted by R, then we sorted within R and then we sorted within uh, on F and then we sorted within RF and got M, right? So we end up with an equal number of customers in each of the cells. So now that we have this, we've, we've done our RFM independent, RFM sequential sort uh, analyses we can go back and we can now begin to start calculating our return on our marketing investment uh, and figure out how much better off we would be potentially if we chose uh, RFM versus perhaps doing nothing. And later in future chapters, we'll see how, uh, for instance, if we chose to uh, target people based on not heuristic methods, but let's say more analyst driven methods like logistic regression, as you'll see uh, looking ahead to chapter eight. So last thing we'll do is we'll save this so that we have a copy of this. We're going to call this RFM and we're going to save it again as a packaged workbook. So whoever opens this will have the data as well as our analysis that we did. And we'll go ahead and save that uh, into our chapter seven folder. So that's a walkthrough of the RFM analysis for chapter seven's example.